Hey there, this is MathCamp321 again, bringing you another installment of Finding Limits, this time by rationalizing the numerator. So we've just talked a lot about direct substitution and the complications that arise if you do direct substitution and you end up with the fraction 0 over 0. So in the last few videos, we're coming up with different strategies for dealing with just that situation. So in this case, we're going to be rationalizing the numerator. So let's take a look at two examples. Number one, find the limit of the expression the square root of x plus 4 minus 2 all over x as x approaches 0. Well, if we start off traditionally with a direct substitution, you'll see something bad happens. We're going to end up getting the square root of 0 plus 4 minus 2 all over 0. Now the square root of 4, it, well, 0 plus 4 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2, so the numerator is really 2 minus 2, and in the end we have 0 over 0. And overall what this means is that we have to try something else. So I'm going to erase that, because it's my scratch work and it's getting in the way, and we're going to engage in this process called rationalizing the numerator. So what I'm going to do is multiply both the top and the bottom of this fraction by a useful form of 1 namely the conjugate of the numerator. So it's going to be the square root of x plus 4, but plus 2 instead of minus 2. And I'm going to do that on the top and on the bottom. Now when I teach pre-calculus, I tell my students that if you're multiplying something complicated by its conjugate, you don't need to FOIL because the outer and the inner are going to always cancel each other out. But what you need to remember is to multiply the first and the last if you're thinking in terms of FOIL. So we're going to multiply the first two elements together, which would be root x plus 4 times root x plus 4, which leaves us with just x plus 4. The outer and the inner would cancel out if we did the full FOIL. And now we'll go to the last, which is to multiply the last elements together, which gives us minus 4. Now moving to the denominator, we're going to distribute this x through this big chunk here. Or I should say, we could distribute it through, but I'm going to leave it as two disjoint factors. So I'm going to have an x out in front, and then that big chunk at the end. And there's a, there's a reason, there's a strategic reason that I did that. And that's because the 4 and the negative 4 on the top are going to cancel each other out, and we're just going to be left with x on top. And that x on top and the x factor on the bottom are going to cancel each other out as well. So what we're really going to be left with on the top is just the number 1. I'll circle it just as a reminder that it's still there. Okay, so now I've cleaned up this initial problem that had the radical in the numerator. The radical is now in the denominator, which is often a bit weird, especially from a pre-calc perspective. We're usually trying to get rid of the radical in the denominator. But for our purposes here, it enables us to do the direct substitution and get a desired outcome. So let's go ahead and plug in that zero and see what happens. I still have the one on the top. We know that plugging in zero right here for x gives us zero plus four, which is four. The principal square root of four is two, and two plus two is four. So we end up with the limit going towards one fourth. So rationalizing the numerator helped us out tremendously. It enabled, it enabled us to do the direct substitution and get the desired result. Okay, let's go to number two. Um, let's start by doing direct substitution for this limit question as, the, uh, as x approaches 7. So let's go ahead and just see what happens by playing around with that a little bit and plugging in for every occurrence of x the value 7. Well, 7 minus 6 is 1. The principal square root of 1 is 1. So that leaves us with the numerator of 1 minus 1 over 7 minus 7. And we all know where this is going. This is going to be 0 over 0 again, or indeterminate form, no good, try something else. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that scratch work so I can free up some space for doing the rationalizing of the numerator. And I'm going to go ahead and get that started. And I'm going to look at that numerator and I'm going to ask myself, what is the conjugate of that numerator? It's essentially a repeat of what I see written except the sign in the middle changes from whatever it is to the opposite. So this is going to be 1 plus the square root of x minus 6. And I'll do that on the bottom as well. Okay, so let's keep going here. 
Okay, to reinforce what I said earlier, what I have here on the numerator are two binomials, and they're, they're kind of big binomials, but they're conjugates of each other. So what that means is that when I do a full FOIL, the outer and the inner will always cancel each other out. So I don't have to think about it like that. I can just think about it like first and last because the outer and the inner are going to go away. So you've heard about FOIL from your Algebra 1 class, I'm sure. F-O-I-L. But the outer and the inner cancel out. So you're really just left with the F and the L, the first and the last. Okay, so the product of the first is going to be 1. Then we've got a negative chunk and a positive of the same chunk. And we know a negative times a positive is going to be negative. And then root chunk times root chunk is just going to be chunk. But it's really critical that because it is a chunk that you put parentheses because it's preceded by a negative and that will have an effect on everything after the parentheses. And we'll deal with that simplification in a minute. Now downstairs is going to be uh, the product of two binomials, I'm not going to FOIL, I'm going to leave them as two disjoint or two distinct factors here. Okay, so focusing now on the numerator, we have 1 minus x plus 6, if we think about distributing that negative through. So 1 plus 6 is 7, and then we've got minus x. And I'm just going to rewrite the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to move to the last step here. I'm going to switch colors because I feel like there's a lot of red there and you're not going to know what exactly I'm looking at. So I'm just going to switch here. And this is a real important algebra skill that I'm about to show you here. We have the 7 minus x on the top and we have x minus 7 on the bottom. These are exact opposites of each other. We have the 7 on the top and the negative 7 on the bottom. We have the negative x on the top but a positive x on the bottom. So these are opposites and they can be canceled so long as you put in a negative 1 to account for those opposites. So the top really boils down to a negative 1 when you do that canceling. So what we're really left with is negative 1 on the top, and then 1 plus the square root of x minus 6 on the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to plug in the 7 and we're going to be done. So the numerator is just negative 1. There's nothing to plug in for there. Now if we put the 7 in here, 7 minus 6 is 1. The principal square root of 1 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So the answer to this limit question is negative 1 half. So your first line of defense in really doing any limit problem is to try to plug in the number of the, uh, the value in the limit. If you get an answer, great, you're done. But if you get this fraction 0 over 0, it means you need to try something else. And the things that we've talked about are uh, factoring in hopes that factors, common factors cancel out. We've talked about simplifying the complex fraction and in this video we talked about rationalizing the numerator. So you're developing some techniques, some strategies for dealing with that situation.